Today we're going to be looking at the 2021 January Silver Question, Dance Moves. So in this question, Farmer John's cows are standing in a line, and what's going to happen is they're going to swap positions. So we're going to be given two numbers, N and K. So N is going to be the number of cows, and then K is going to be the number of swaps. And we want to figure out the total number of unique positions every cow can reach. So they're going to swap K times, they're going to do it again, and then we just want to know the number of different positions they can occupy. So let's look at the algorithm for this question. Okay, so before we start on the actual algorithm, there's a couple of key observations we need to make. So the main observation we're going to see is that if I start at position 1 and go through K swaps, the path that I take is going to be exactly the same no matter what number it is. So for path 1, or position 1, it's going to go through this path. For position two, it's gonna go through this path, position three, this path, and so on and so forth. So the reason this is important is we're gonna be using a DFS to create groups. So this question is actually really similar to a previous silver question, a 20 February swapity swap. So the code is pretty similar, but the basic idea is what I wanna do is I wanna create groups. So I want to follow a cycle. So let's say we're going to follow the cycle of position one. I'm going to start at position one. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to end at position five. Then since we know that it's going to go to the same path, no matter what, we know that if I end here, I'm going to go through the same path as position five here. So what I know is that if I end at five here, I'm going to go through position five here. So I'm going to continue on until I reach 1. So position 5 is going to end at position 4. From position 4, we're going to go through this path and end at position 3. Then we're going to go through position 3, end at position 2, 2, and finally end at 1. And now that we've ended at 1, we can create our cycle. So what this is going to look like is I'm going to have a graph. I'm going to have a group and a cycle. So in this group, I'm going to have edges that go between these starting locations. So if 1 ends at 5, 1 is going to point to 5. If 5 ends at 4, 5 is going to point to 4. And then what I'm going to do is for each of these nodes, I'm going to have a vector or a list of all of the locations that I visit within the path. So once we have our groups, the second key observation we're just going to make is that for any number, let's say we follow the path of 1 again, what's going to happen is it's going to travel through this loop and it's just going to travel through the cycle over and over again. So it's only going to visit the positions within this group. So what this means is that we're going to be able to look at all of the vectors here, which have the different positions that we visit. And if we create a set that has all of these positions, all of the elements within these groups are simply just going to visit these. So what this means is that for this group over here, we're going to visit the positions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 5, 4, and then 4, 3, then 3, 2, and finally 2, 1. And then when you put this in a set, it's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then for another group, position 6, it's just going to visit position 6, and that's it. So what we're going to do is we are going to have two different vectors. One is going to be the group ID to the group, and the other one is going to be the node to the group ID. And what we're going to do is for every group, we're going to calculate the set. And then at the very end, we're just going to output the set size for every node. So let's go look at this in the code. So what I have here is the basic setup. I'm going to resize my values, and we'll go over these later. I'm going to read in the input. I'm going to create a vector called A, and what this is, is it's just going to be a vector with the values 0, 2, n, and uh, that's what iota is. And then I'm going to use a couple macros. So I'm going to have f and s as first and second, and I'm going to define ll as long long. So every time I use vector, you can interchangeably use that for list or array for whatever code you're using, by the way. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate the first k swaps. So what this is, is since we still need to create the vectors for every value, and uh, where they visit during the first case swaps, we're just going to simulate it. So I'm going to have a 2D vector called trace. And the first dimension is going to be the node value. And then the second dimension is just going to be a vector of all of the different places it visits. 
So this is just what you saw earlier. And it's going to create these nodes. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make what's going to be called a jump table. So this part is just for convenience. All I'm doing is I'm creating a jump table, or in this case, a vector, which is just going to map all of the values to where they end. So if one ends at five, at position five, after the first case swaps, jump table one is going to be equal to five. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find cycles. So this is what we talked about earlier. What it's going to be is we're going to create the cycles and create the groups using a DFS. So this is our function. So we're going to start with a current ID. This is going to be the group ID. And then we're just going to loop through all of the nodes. And then when we loop through all of the nodes, we're going to have two main vectors. The first one is going to be my group, which is going to map the current ID of the cow over to which group it is in. And then the second one is going to be called groups. So groups is going to be a 2D vector of vectors. And then the outer vector is just going to be the groups. It's going to be the size of groups. And then the inner one is just going to contain a list or a vector of all of the nodes and all of their IDs that are in this current group. So I'm going to create a temporary vector called group IDs. I'm going to assign my group ID as current ID. Over here, I'm also going to check whether or not I'm already been assigned to a group. If I have, if it's not negative one, that means I've already been assigned to a group and I'm going to continue. I'm going to find the next value. And what I'm going to do here is I'm basically going to skip over the swaps. So this is faster than actually simulating since I don't have to go through as many swaps. I'm just going to go through and create J as jump table J, which basically means I'm going to continue on and skip by every K swaps. So I'm going to keep going until I reach my original position. And then once I do that, I finish the group. So this pretty much is the first part of the program. This is also pretty similar to the 20 February swapity swaps code. So yeah. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to calculate all of the values and all of the sets for every group. So I'm going to have a map that's going to map the group ID over to the size of the set of the group ID called fin ANS. And then I'm going to loop through all of the group IDs. So I'm going to keep an unordered set. You can use a normal set called current set. And then I'm going to loop through all of the values inside the group ID. And then for every node in the group ID or in the group, I'm going to loop through its vector from trace. So this is the trace vector from the simulation. I'm going to loop through that and I'm going to insert the value into the current set. At the very end, I'm just going to put the value of fin ANS group ID to the size. So for the gold question here, there is a little bit more work. I'll try and link the video, but it's pretty much the same idea. And then at the very end, all we're going to do is we're going to output the value and then we're going to return. And that's the end of the program.